Iron Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today I'm going to do something a little special. I actually went to the store and I bought a bunch of meat today. There was a meat sale going on at the local grocery store. So I went ahead and bought some stuff. Um, actually bought some New York strips, some ribeyes, got some chicken thighs, some smoked sausage, a couple pork tenderloins, and some more pork butt. Um, this is going to be for my son's uh, church trip. They're going to North Carolina next week, and I'm going to make up a bunch of uh, pulled pork for them. And I'm going to do a video on this one where I'm actually going to do one of the pork butts the normal barbecue way, and one of them I'm going to do uh, sous vide barbecue. Uh, so that's going to be a future video. And this here, I bought a full packer brisket from GFS. I had a friend of mine ask me to make him a pastrami, and I'm going to do that. So. I bet this is going to be another video where I'm going to show you how I trim this up, get it in the brine for a week, and then make some sous vide uh, pastrami, sous vide Q pastrami. So I'll be right back and I'll walk you through how I'm going to package some of this stuff up and uh, store it. Because um, I usually buy all my meat in bulk anyway, and I usually will season them before I throw them in the uh, vacuum sealer bag and into the freezer. So I'll do a couple of those and show you how I'm back. I'll be right yeah. back. I'm going to start doing the steaks first. I bought some good ribeyes today and I bought some good New York strips. But I'm going to take these uh, ribeyes that I bought and we're going to go ahead and package them out in about three in a package. Um, I'm going to do two, two separate packages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my steak rub that I normally do. Um, and it will be down in the description of the recipe, which is normally kosher salt, coarse ground black pepper, garlic powder, and some uh, espresso coffee, fine ground. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that on the steaks, both sides. Just going to go ahead and rub it on there so it kind of gets in there. Just going to push it into this meat a little bit. I'm not going to put a whole ton in there. I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of them while I have the I have it open. We're only going to put three in each package, though. But I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and rub these up. Just put enough in there to kind of coat the outer surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these in the vacuum bag, and we're just going to throw them in the freezer just like that. And what that's going to allow us to do is when we're ready to cook. All we have to do is grab the pack out of the freezer, throw it right in the sous vide. Um, we make sure that we give enough time in the sous vide to uh, account for that. So, but I'm going to go ahead and take these and we're going to go ahead and throw them in the vacuum sealer bag. I've already got some pre-made here, so it's pretty easy to uh, make these from your vacuum bag. You don't need to use vacuum bags, you can use Ziploc bags, but I'm going to go ahead and throw these right in. Like I said, I'm going to do three in a pack just so that uh, we can make two meals out of these. It's only four of us and my wife won't eat a whole one neither of my daughter. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in and vacuum seal it up and I'll be right back. One thing I want to show you guys, um, I know a lot of people are familiar with these uh, Food Saver and other brand of vacuum sealer. Um, vacuum sealer machines but one of the things people don't do a lot of times is actually clean this seal bar and the top and the bottom after each use wipe it down and this little uh this little uh, juice retainer bar uh, pack here needs to get cleaned out after every use you need to clean that out you need to wipe these seal bars down uh, and just clean it up uh, Preferably use a little bit of bleach or something on there, some fantastic, something that's gonna kill the germs as well. But that will actually make your vacuum sealer uh, machine last a whole lot longer and work a lot better. So I just recommend you guys do that. Make sure you go ahead and clean it after every use, wipe it down, especially this seal where the seal bar is, because that's the first thing that goes on a lot of these. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and seal up these steaks. These are those ribeyes I just put in there. Let's go ahead and make sure you have it so that it, the bag is going into that drain, uh, that little drain there. Close it up, make sure you get it locked in pretty tight and that there's no folds in the bag. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the moist uh, function. My vacuum sealer has a moist option where it will actually seal a little bit harder because it'll know there's some moisture that's going to come up in between the two, uh, in between the, on the vacuum bag here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the moist button and then just go ahead and let it run. So it's going to seal it for the first time. And I always double seal on everything. Um, I've had some issues uh, before, um, once or twice where the seal came loose cooking at a hotter temperature or whatever. So there's no reason to risk it. It takes two seconds. Usually just pop the lid open so that seal bar can cool off and then just hit it again um, with the seal. And what that does, it just reinsures that you got that seal in there pretty tight. So, all right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and package up some of the other steaks and I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, now I'm gonna do the New York strips and I'm gonna put all four of these in one bag because they're going to be for one meal. I'm probably going to have it where I have my son and his girlfriend come over that night. So uh, planning ahead is really a good idea when you're uh, when you're doing sous vide, uh, especially when you're cooking for you know longer periods of time. Just so you know, I mean, I always plan meals ahead of time, at least a couple days ahead of time. But I got these New York strips out, and I'm going to go ahead and wash up real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some more rub on. That's got a good, nice, even coat on everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in a bag and vacuum seal them up just like I did the last time. Hey guys, I'm back. And now what I'm gonna do, I actually washed the pan, washed my hands, got new gloves on, uh, and I've got these pork tenderloins out of their package and ready to get all seasoned up and thrown in the bag. So there was two in each pack, so I got four Tenderloins, I'm going to put two in a pack and my, when I vacuum seal them. And I'm going to use the Running Wild Peach Rub. Uh, I love the peach rub. It's good on chickens, good on pork, um, it's good on ribs, good on brisket. Uh, not, you know, it's, it's good on a lot of uh, different meats, but I really like it on pork and chicken a lot more than brisket. But um, it's good uh, to mix with other rubs as well. Sometimes I'll mix the, mix the pork candy and the peach together. But I'm just going to put the peach rub on these and we're going to, on both of them, and then we're going to vacuum seal them up. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put them in the freezer. So just like uh, with the steaks, you know, you don't need a whole ton of the rub. You're just putting enough to give it a coating because you are going to want to put some more seasoning on it after it comes out of the sous vide bath. But this is going to let us like I said, be able to just take these right out of the freezer and throw the whole vacuum sealer bag right into the sous vide. Okay guys, and I got the chicken thighs now and uh, washed the pan off really good. Um, got my chicken thighs, changed my gloves out. And on this one, I'm actually going to use a different kind of rub. I'm gonna put these all in one bag because usually when I make chicken thighs, I have people over and we they get eaten. And if I don't have anybody over, we still will eat most of them and we'll have the next, uh, the rest for the next day and we'll make chicken salad out of them. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use actually the Running Wild uh, Smoky Paprika Rub on these. I used this last time on them and actually they came out really good. My rub that I usually make for chicken has a lot of paprika in it anyway, but uh, I found this, uh, this actually has got a little smoky taste to it. So it's like smoked paprika. So I like using this. And remember, look down in the description below for the running wild code fire and water you get 15 percent off your order there's a link a link there for the uh running wild website and um, they've been gracious enough to send me some of these rubs and i've used them for a long time and actually like them so i'm going to go ahead and put some of this uh running wild smoky paprika on the chicken and then we're just going to package it up and throw them in the freezer and then we're ready to cook them we're just going to go ahead and toss them in the bath. So, all right, let me finish doing this, guys. I'll get them in a bag and get them all vacuum sealed up. Okay, guys, that's back. it. And I got my pack of uh, four New York strips. Got two packs of ribeyes, so three each. Got my big pack of chicken thighs. And I got my two packs of uh, pork tenderloins. So, that's it. That's a good for, you know, uh, six meals right there. Maybe a couple more. Um, because <laughs> we usually eat these chicken thighs for a couple days, but um, it's pretty easy. Like I said, uh, I do it this way. You don't have to. This is I just prefer it this way because it's a lot easier when I'm coming home from work. 
and I gotta throw something in the uh, sous vide or grab it in the morning before I run out to throw it in. I don't have to worry about thawing it out for you know a day or so or a couple days before I throw it in. So that's just how I do it. Hope this helped. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Share it with your friends. Join us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. And thanks again, and I'll see you at the next one.